Titles Bill interrupted debate on second reading. When we were last on this debate, Moana Mackey was speaking and has nine minutes remaining if she so wishes. Mr Speaker. Moana Mackey. Thank you. I do so wish. Um, I was saying last week um, on this, this piece of legislation, this very good Labour Party piece of legislation, it's nice to see it back in the House. Nice to sit back out. It's been a bit of a night for Labour Party legislation, <laughs> hasn't it? We've had the previous financial advisors bill. This bill, well, that's a, that's a very good question. It's a very good question. But here we are, 15 months into this new government, and we continue to pass Labour Party <laughs> legislation. Time for a change. That, that's right. And, and, and I, I hope that the Minister Simon Power acknowledged Leanne Dalzell and her on the financial advisors tonight. bill. I know that, that, that he, I've been told he did tonight. I wish Phil Heatley had acknowledged the role that the Labour Party did in, in doing all the work on the unit titles piece of legislation before he picked it up and put it in the House and send it to a select committee. Because I often refer to the Minister Phil Heatley as a bit like a cuckoo bird, which is one of those birds... No, 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 hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Which is one of those birds that jumps into other people's nests. So it lets, every, it lets another bird do all the work, build the nest, and then the cuckoo bird jumps in and claims credit for it. And Housing Minister Phil Heatley is a little bit like that, in that he never acknowledges that he actually did none of the work on the pieces of legislation that he's put through this House. And I have to ask, what has he actually done in his 15 months as Housing Minister, really, apart from, apart from progress, apart from progress Labour Party legislation? But the least he could do was acknowledge the fact that he had nothing to do with the unit titles bill. Nothing to do with it. All the work was done by the previous government. All the drafting was done by the previous government. All he had to do was come down and give a speech written for him by his officials, which he did. And he did it very well. He read his speech very well. But I thought he could have perhaps just mentioned in passing that it was the previous government that did all the work on that piece of legislation. And of course, we will be supporting this very important piece of legislation. The other thing the minister said last week was that uh, he, he, this was so important, and it had to be it had to be progressed through the house at haste. Which begs the question: Why, when this piece of legislation was reported back from select committee in September last year, has it languished on the order paper until now? Good question. If it's that important. Well, Mr Ockenvoll, who completely missed the point of what I was saying once again, said because it's an incredibly important piece of legislation. And my question was, why was it not progressed through the House ahead of some of the useless pieces of legislation that we passed under urgency prior to Christmas? This could have been passed prior to Christmas if it was so important. And it is important. Which begs the question, where, where, oh where, is the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill? Where has it gone? Because this was another piece of legislation, along with the Unit Titles Act, a uh, Unit Titles Bill, the Unit Titles Bill, which Labor drafted. Labor did all the work on. Minister Phil Heatley jumped in and said, "Mine. I did all the work. I take all the credit." Went through the House again. That's right. Got put into the House. Went to Select Committee. He was going to he was going to progress it with the utmost haste because this was incredibly important, and it's disappeared again. Reported back from Select Committee last year and it hasn't gone anywhere. And that one is particularly important because it extended the protections of tenancy law to boarding house tenants. And we've heard uh, of boarding house tenants who were asked to shift out of their uh, accommodation over Christmas so that other people could move in, over the sevens, so that other people could move in. And if that actually had the protection of the law under the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill, that wouldn't have happened. So we ask, it's nice to see this bill back, where is the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill that this government promised to progress? Now, Mr Speaker, the Unit Titles Bill is, is very important. I want to, to say how much I enjoyed working on the Select Committee on this piece of legislation. At first glance, it's incredibly technical. It's the kind of thing where it's plonked down in front of you and you think, oh no, this is really going to make your head spin. But it's an incredibly important piece of legislation, and it's long overdue for an overhaul. And um, as the Minister said in his speech, and I absolutely concur, uh, the law that is currently in place was drafted at a time where we probably didn't envision the range of developments 
uh, that fall into this category, uh, or the significant number. And, and it's, it's estimated that within 50 years, 500,000 people in Auckland will be living in, these, in this kind of accommodation. And for that reason, it, it was incredibly important that, that the legislation be brought into the 21st century, or even into the latter part of the 20th century. And even simple things, things which we see coming through our, our offices, for example, I'm clarifying things, and, and most people will probably think this would be self-evident, but the roof of a building. Now, there have been stouches had over whether the people who live in the top uh, apartments should pay for repairs to the roof, despite the fact that, that, that everyone benefits from having a roof on, on, on the development. And when we heard these things coming to select committee, it was almost hard to believe that that kind of thing had never been clarified before. And so we have clarified that, that where you have common property such as a roof, then it is uh, the domain of all the residents to pay for the upkeep uh, of that, and not simply the people who are in those top apartments. Seems really common sense and simple, but I'm really pleased now that that's been clarified in legislation. The other thing which probably wasn't envisioned at the time that the previous law was written was these multi-stage developments. And, and this is really, really important, to make it clear exactly what rights people who hold a unit title have in a multi-stage development um, where the next stage may change significantly from what they expected it to be when they purchased their unit title. And we've made clarifications around that in this legislation. We've introduced a lot more transparency in terms of the financials and the running of the body corporate. And body corporates are not cheap. And one of the things that a lot of people might find difficult, and we have a lot of retired people that move uh, into, into these unit title developments, and one of the issues is when they suddenly get whacked with a really big bill. So all of a sudden they've been going along, they've been paying their body corporate, they're, they're able to do that and they can budget for it. Then suddenly something needs to be repaired. The lift needs to be put back in or the roof needs to be completely replaced. And all the uh, members of that body corporate get, get a large bill. And for some people, particularly those on fixed incomes, that's really, really difficult for them to be able to come up with it short notice. So what we wanted to do was to set in place uh, management plans and maintenance plans so that these things have to be planned for. Uh, the body corporate holds some money in reserve so that that impact is less. But during the course of the select committee process, we also accepted that, that body corporates didn't need to have incredibly large reserves all the time and that, that that in fact in itself might be difficult for some people to maintain. And so I, I'm really pleased that the Select Committee was able to take a common sense approach to that issue as well and to introduce flexibility around that provision. Now I've also been made aware tonight that I thought we'd fix the issues around retirement villages and, and making sure that where there was overlapping, um, where there's overlapping requirements under their own legislation, the Retirement Villages Act, and this, that we clarified that. Now, I understand that, that, that uh, the Retirement Villages Association has been in touch with the Minister. Perhaps we didn't get it quite right, and that an SOP will be introduced into the House just to clarify that we're not trying to put two entirely different uh, laws on one, which require different things of the same people. Uh, and so, of course, Labour will want to examine that SOP but certainly uh, it is our intent that we, we want to support whatever we can to clarify that we, don't we, don't, we, we didn't intend to duplicate the requirements on retirement villages. So, Mr Speaker, this is an important piece of legislation. I think the Select Committee did a, a very good job in making sure that what came out the other end um, incorporated the common sense that we heard from submitters at the Select Committee. Um, I'd like to thank the officials uh, on this piece of legislation. They were uh, very easy to work with. They were able to explain very technical things in very simple language and they were able to take the concerns that were raised by submitters and actually put them through to amendments. Um, and I just want to acknowledge the Honourable Shane Jones, who's in the House, for all the work that he did developing this incredibly important piece of legislation. It's nice to still have a little bit of Labour government uh, coming through 15 months later. I wonder when they're going to start doing some of their I'm own sorry legislation. Sorry to interrupt the uh, member. Her time has expired.